Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Previously, our friend Sayori went home early. Now that Sunday has come around, we're now gonna go visit her. So I've been mainly going down the Natsuki route, but let's change up pace and let's go down Sayori's route a little bit. Because the storyline seems to be revolving around her, this might make more thematic sense. Uh, it's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been text texting me a lot. We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone. A few tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. I'm putting Natsuki aside. I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything. But I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feeling aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori. Oh, things are fine. I think. Hi, Manly. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Oh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and the wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I ended up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly want to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival pre preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Oh, so it's just me and Natsuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharistic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Manly. Eh? Why can't I just be like I'd always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. That's true. I wouldn't have. But gotta get all the routes. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Manly. But... You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. Her dark secret. You're just seeing it for the first time. This is why... When you choose the responses in the poems, she likes the ones like... Broken. Depression. Worthless. Those answers. On top of the happy ones. Seeing what? Duality of character, as you would say. What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Manly? 
I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spin it on me? That's what, I fe that's what it feels like. That's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Because you don't pay attention. Because you don't like her as much. Did she really want so badly for me just not to think about her? You're thinking about the only other anime girls. Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Because sometimes when you've got depression, you don't feel like telling the ones that are closest to you. It becomes a compounded problem. Even if there's only so much I, that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. She doesn't like that word. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Manly. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you wouldn't have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I want so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why... That's why I decide the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. And this is your route, too. Oh, I just can't imagine like how the other routes go down. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Manly. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, Manly, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Manly, Sayori isn't hugging me back. There's been my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Manly, I... Sayori so barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you haven't entered you call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. Remember what it takes. I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently Sayori politely puts her arm around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Manly. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? No. Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this would be the one I have to have our plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. 
Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But something terrible is gonna happen. I just feel it in my bones right now. A mixture of misunderstandings and tragedy. It's almost time for Natsuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, you want to come along and help out. It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about when Natsuki is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I should be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I spend only a few minutes back at home anxiously waiting Natsuki's arrival. But before I know it, she texts me and let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Hey, you got a casual outfit. What's up? Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki and something over there in a school uniform totally threw me off. Oh, you're going for the frills look. Seeing so such a cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already. It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki's carrying a large bag that's probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out your kitchen's in the equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. We have a really nice kitchen. Although the dining room table being in the middle of it is kind of a little weird. A little cramped. Good. Then I can count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm manly. Badass hero. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could be that she's a little different outside of school after all. Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. Why, you're not even off to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, manly? Come on. Does when I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. It's ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? Dang anime girl, super strength. I see now. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. It seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Natsuki hits a fist in my chest. Baga! Hey, hey. Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? <laughs> um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. But... Jeez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. <laughs> what? That's a little bit more like you? You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey, now you were treating me like a kid. I was just trying to be a little more nice to you, you know? Just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Ah. Natsuki catches her words and face turns red. Here it comes out. Natsuki. Forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Eh? I appreciate that you are trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're faking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Especially guys who like anime. Uh, how would you know that anyway? Who do you think I am? Just trust me on this one. Gross. Hey! Was that to me? Who else? Man. Let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. Of course I would. I finally found your weakness, Manly. Insults! Natsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. 
Why don't you satisfied enough for now? I'll finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we get started. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour spilled through into plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Manly, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Ah, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me. I don't really have a preference, so... Come on. You're not putting any heart into this at all. Can you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what Natsuki's trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food and coloring into each. Some of that's her blood. Ah, oh, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if you just looking at it, it makes everyone's eyes line up. Like the ones you made my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat cupcakes and Sayori Monoka Monoka's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah. Maybe I will use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh? The icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be out all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Looks like he grabs a whisk from me and uses her hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if they empathize, that's like he sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! That's like he suddenly grabs my wrist. Time for the Doki Doki event. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Listen, you love these fingers. Just accept it. Stop the Sundari act, we've been here for too long. Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger toward the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my fingers to reach the icing. I carefully scoop some with my finger just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Up! Uh, the force of Natsuki pulling me caused me to stumble, making her stumble and turn. Here we go. Here comes the anime antics. Gross. You got on my face. Whose fault was that? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Hey, let me just... Let me just get that. She tries to reach up her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez. You know what? Take this! Natsuki instead wipes it off of her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. Some good old... Some good old-fashioned fun. It's good old-fashioned American fun. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her whisk from my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Ooh, a CG. Got a little red on it. <laughs> Stop! Now until you apologize for calling me gross, Sayori's gonna walk in and it's gonna be so awkward. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know. Saying dumb things just get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease at girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. What are we doing? I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. Ooh, smooth, manly. O what? Did, did you seriously just... Uh... Natsuki is so surprised when she came and forgot how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Manly? You really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls. Unless you really like them. You know that, right? Well, this is your route. What kind of question is she asking me? Just like that. How did the moon turn to this so quickly? I... Natsuki gazing at me in silence. Oh god. 
I noticed her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Hey. Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Sage by the bell, quite lowly. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. Cough. No wonder. You left a dirty tray in here, you dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? God, that's such a rookie mistake. Even I know it. You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. That's like he uses the oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sits on top of the stove. And every moment the fire alarm stops. Anyway. I'm, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. Attention from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment has already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides a cupcake trays in the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue the icing like nothing ever happened. Ugh, that smells so good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet smelling warm air fills the room. Mmm, it smells like determination. Look how cute they all look. She probably shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I bought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. It's time to get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. Nice bags. I have these nozzles, I'll make it more nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time, though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that's much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin, so you can use to make stripes or other patterns. But you can also use the right stuff on a cake. Like, happy birthday, or whatever. Huh, I see. That gives me an idea, actually. Eh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We can make it more literature theme by drawing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It'd be fun to see people choose their cupcake based on a word they like. Uh, hmm? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. No, I've been smooth this entire VN. What are you... I mean, you guys are the awkward ones. But that's actually a really cute idea, so... <laughs> Maybe I'm getting in from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. No, you're kawaii. Moi, moi. Come on. We're not at school, nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. W well... Natsuki's voice trails off. The same with you. Eh? Yeah? Did you say something? N nothing Let's just do the icing. Natsuki picks up the paste and fastens the nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here. I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about it before... Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing, and then we can each get to work. When we are finally finished, Natsuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look how pretty they are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Ugh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I mean, we probably made a whole bunch of cupcakes. I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but... My dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. It's just a single cupcake. You're gonna be, you're gonna be hungry by the time you get back home. <laughs> Sayori's the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, we'd probably be down 10 cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway. I said we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Uh, already? That's a shame. It's your fault for not working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you always have this chance. Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. At least we got some... Anime Antic Doki Doki events. And a CG. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, then you probably do it in one trip. And the cupcakes were never delivered. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Ah. Uh, yeah. 
I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori also does listen to me, but at that point felt like she didn't li couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, Natsuki's are already about to leave. If it was the afternoon, went by in a flash. More than that. They even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted. Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki. Are, are we gonna kiss? Eh? What you said before, but not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how the fun baking could be. Like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over any time, okay? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere. Um, do you really mean that? That's like he looks at me tensely like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you. M Manly, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Uh, I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. Of course you didn't. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Natsuki suddenly gets close to me. Oh god, we are gonna kiss. Wait, Natsuki. Thing inches for me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? Oh god, so you always be looking at us through a window. My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I felt it. For a while now. That's like suddenly jumps back. Sayori! Oh! Eh? Uh. Hi, Manly. Sayori. Just now we weren't... No, we totally were. Let's just... Let's just... Get that off the table. It's okay, Manly. I just stopped by to say hi. Oh, God, my heart. Uh. Well... You should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Uh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well... I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. Clearly flustered Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori. I thought you didn't want to come over today. Um, well... I tried staying in my room. But my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? You, you know what. What are you talking about? You know. How much fun you were having with Natsuki. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy. That you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Manly? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? Because you characters can never seem to admit your feelings to each other. It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Manly. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? What did she say? Sayori! What I said before is true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Manly. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Manly. I like you so much that I want to die. 
That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slid my hand down to Sayori's arm and squeezed her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Where the seat, Sayori nods. If you don't understand all your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give to you. Sayori. So this is the Yuri route, um, approach of things. I actually went back and did some testing around on the Natsuki route and the Sayori version of events back there. And there actually was no difference, so... It seems what you choose for the finale as far as which girl creates misunderstandings no matter what, and there's literally no dialogue difference based on relationship. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moan of panic. Yuri. Ah. Uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. For more anime antics. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I just know it's where in my bedroom. This ain't good. I would have gladly helped you clean. Up. Uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I sent Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you just find my porn stash? I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap as if she's making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Yarnaika. Uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know. Mood lighting. Aromatherapy candles. What kind of... What kind of work are we doing here? <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I think she plans to take it that far, if you know what I mean. If you're following me. If you get the gist. The neurons are firing. If you understand. I want to help take our guest to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. Boy, you really have an out for her. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. I suppose it's just flirting. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Uh, let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, won't, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with the aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Oh, boy. Uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to positive atmosphere. 
Depending on the oils or the herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes a cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole at the top. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I see. I see where this is going. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. You implying Jasmine's the Doki Doki scent? Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? I feel like you just brought it because it's perfect for romance here. It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smells gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well... Did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. You won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different kanji character on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm gonna get pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the kanji paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I actually remember doing something like that in class in elementary school. Years, you know, kindergarten actually. Very long time ago. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Just the two of us. Just a bunch of sand and oils, just the two of us. Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Manly. You can write any character you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Oh, alright. See on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to match my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well, embarrassed Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Yep. Aroma scent candles. Knives. Tissue papers. It's only the one thing. A Naruto cosplay reenactment. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and the feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. That suits me. Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool-looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me a knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of my knife with my index finger. Owl! Manly! Why did you do that? Now lick it. I know that's what you're gonna do, damn vampire. I didn't expect it to be that sharp. You're sucking all my moy out. I barely touch it at all. It's my fault. 
I should have warned you. Warn me that knife is sharp. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. That's what a knife is supposed to do. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh... She stares at it noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh... Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I told you she'd do this. I got their numbers. I got their numbers. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Really? You're curling her tongue around there? It's a little bit much. Sterile, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. And the weirdest. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh... She was a little weird and took me by surprise. It was a lot weird. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? No. Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Ah, uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyways. We're gonna do a blood pact. No, well, somewhat. There's no blood. But I had the right idea. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Manly, did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I think that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the hair would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Manly. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird. I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut, but we are getting no work done. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut for the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the kanji. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. And that's when we accidentally stumble into each other, creating an awkward, kind of tense sexual moment. Looks better than I expected, and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One well, of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water... I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use the small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri. Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. What were you doing? Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh... No, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So... I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang on the wall behind the podium in front of the classroom. Oh, neat. What are you going to write? Well... It will be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. If you're rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on the opposite side so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses the brush that adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner of watercolor feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. 
Um, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops paying for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. You mean me. Even something simple like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if you and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games. We're simply sure the experience of someone can make me happy. Unless you have pleb taste. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump to hers. Here we go. Kia! Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just stalled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Oh, your face! There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Let me just lick those off, too. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I actually got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush down and fetch a small towel and damp it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Aw, oh, just a simple towel rubbing CG. You have, like, relatively tame CGs, actually. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. It ain't the towel that's hot. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? And just... For a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. She's reading me. Almost if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? I said the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling. You use gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seemed to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, you just slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out, don't worry. That's my powers. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the events that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finished filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and unnatural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, uh, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Except you know... But this is a work safe the end, so that won't be happening. You say that like it, you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you're at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Um, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Uh, so you don't have any time left. I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Yuri thinks to herself, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. 
It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's because that whole debacle of the fingers. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we get to get everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Giving all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It's not like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But it doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Oh, thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I was glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you could be to bring tomorrow. I will. Time for antics. And misunderstandings. And pain in the heart. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I couldn't say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. And, uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway. You know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Manly. You takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, 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 how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S sayori Eh? Uh, hi, Manly. Sayori. Just now we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Manly. I just stopped by to say hi. Um... Well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry about Mori on my way to leave. Uh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. And that's where the differences in route ends. So I've reloaded. Um, like I said before, there's... The only difference in the routes, really, is just who you pick at the end. So you can fairly be in Natsuki's route, then choose Yuri, and they'll be exactly the same events, word for word. So, either way, it's kind of shoehorning you into some misunderstanding. Not really misunderstanding, I mean, you're gonna kiss the girl, but... kind of thing. But I've reloaded back into Sayori's route anyways, just to see, maybe there will be a difference. And... Let's go with the top option. Let's see what happens. I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So, there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with, every, with you every day, it helped me realize that you're truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. I highly suspect, this is a little side comment, that the actual choices may not matter up to this point, and it really comes down to this finale. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Manly. Suddenly Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Manly. Is this really okay? Yeah. Well, so that's what I look like. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Manly. I want to be with you forever. Me too. Until I reload this save. I feel Sayori's grip around my weakened a little bit. What is this? Sayori. I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would happen be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now. Why won't the rain clouds go away? Oh no, it's raining. They're not going away at all, Manly. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be the every be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I can handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. 
Hey, Manly. Sayori gazes me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me. Right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. I felt like a bunch of foreigns when you told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her. I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me. Now do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. So, we'll see what the friend zone option is. You'll always be my dearest friend. This is gonna be sad. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Oh my god, this is so terrible. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now. But, please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way, the way they were. I... I see. Sayori so forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori. It's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Manly. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sherry's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. Oh god. Scream. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! It's as bad as I thought it was. I'm left helplessly standing in the front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more than I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I could comfort her. I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. So going back to the Sayori route for this sequence. It's a day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school of Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the up cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki's already texting me up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Manly? You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets in each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that as all the poems we were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's when I'll be performing. We're just plagiarizing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, I'm surprised myself. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days that's important, she'd try a little harder. Or maybe you'd go and visit her and make sure she's okay. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because of the way I'm used to thinking. But, maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Manly. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. How did you know about that? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? 
Bonica, you know about that. Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sarah really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now. I didn't really plan to bring it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want me to check out the pamphlets? They came up really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid on the desks. Oh yeah, they, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it almost a professional feel. I recognized Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the one they performed during our practice. Mm, what's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's the one that I haven't read before. Oh god. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But the poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Manly, what's wrong? Um, nothing. What do you mean, nothing? This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go eat Sayori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. Yeah, I should have. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer so she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori. She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Wake her up in her own house. That really is something that boyfriend would do, isn't it? Now is not the time. In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter the room like this. Is it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Talk to the wolf! What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. See how you wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I'd be there for her. I told her that I know what's best and everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I should never confess to her. That's not my story needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swearing thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. But I just spent more time with her. Watch her to school. Boy, this music change is kind of eerie. We remain friends with her like it always has been. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. Yes, it is. I only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. 
And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed for me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 End. Oh god. Monica's switched her out. Well, this is normal. C can I... Can I save Scum? Back to here. Yep, here we go. I see an annoying girl running toward me from a distance, waving her arms around like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is my neighbor and I'm good friends since we were children. You know the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today. It just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school she would oversleep more and more frequently. Now we get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh an island from the crosswalk and let catch up to me. It's just some kind of weird amalgamation of all the girls in one go. Some weird chimera. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about the time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting on by average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. <laughs> the school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before we know it. After I pack up my things, I start blanking at the wall. Looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Manly? Who? Monica? Oh god, we're about to join the anime club. Thank you. You corrupt missing no. Oh my goodness. I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we really talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in the class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in for, anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? I'm about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. This dialogue is very deja vu. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity, and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy, and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. A literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um... <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. There are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Natsuki? Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member is a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Manly. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you'd do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could lay very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um... Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Plus, unlike the anime club, it's full of girls. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Uh, awesome. Is this gonna be the Monica route? 
been like locked out. You're really sweet, Manly. You know that? It's nothing really. Shall we go then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. I'm not gonna deny that. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irre irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs. A section of the school I rarely visit, but being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back. And I brought a guest with me. But... Uh, a guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. I don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Manly. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute grills. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Huh? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki. Energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. Vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears apparently more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into Manly in a classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica? Did I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know, make cupcakes. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Manly? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens a closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sits across from each other. Still feeling awkward to take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming here. But we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. If you could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. It makes school events like the festival and that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. So different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places the teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? And don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Um, I guess. <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not... Insulted Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Manly, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I'm not quietly myself half-joking. Oh boy, there's a lot of deja vu going on here. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri twists the rim of her teacup with a finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can be so deliberately take advantage of their own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh, I read a horror book once. 
It's called Minecraft the Novel. I'm desperately grasping I can relate to a minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. <laughs> I expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or it takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. Bug, I hate horror. You better stop believing in horror stories, because you're in one. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes started over me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You have to be so scrappy or behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud. I give that back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Or, well, I, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Wait a minute. Happy thoughts. Trace back? Let's see, trace back. I'm sorry, but non-caught exception occurred. Let's see, game menu, game drop, common. Oh, jeez, I didn't break anything, did I? I don't think I'd probably fix this, I think. Actually, you know what? This will probably be a lot easier just to meet her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. Aha, <laughs> like, well, here goes nothing. No! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, I'm not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Seeing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest breaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? If you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. You all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then the next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Um... Uh... I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Is this gonna be like a completely entire second run of the game? Minus Sayori. <laughs> well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as the members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Manly? Hold on, there's still one problem. And what's that? Now we reached the most important topic, I've only come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. How's Annie? Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and I'm... I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Eh... The girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I... Guess I need to tell you the truth, Manly. The thing is... We don't have enough memories at the form official club. We need four... And I've been trying really hard to find new members. If we don't find one more before the festival... Oh boy, guilt trip. I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. And so if writing poems is the price you need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Really, it actually is a really small price. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Manly? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, you really just left after all this? I'd be super pissed. I'd be super pissed with Manly. Manly, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Manly, look forward to seeing how much you express yourself. Yeah. Can I really impress the class of Monica with my mediocre with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. 
I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way my mind wants back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki. Yuri. And of course, Monica. And Sayori. Well, I'd really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club. Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. You have a special poem, and you like to read it? Can I say no? I can't convince myself to go to therapy when I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'd rather keep this up until I blow my cover and someone takes me to the emergency room. Hey. What? You think Monica would be there, but no, it's just two girls. 